Hello everyone, today I will try to make my own DC to DC converter and investigate how each part affects the overall efficiency. I've designed a lot of devices with DC converters. Uh, first layouts were terrible, but I learned a lot during next designs and today I'm able to lay out converter and uh, verify that it meets uh, the manufacturer's parameters and also uh, the converter can pass the electromagnetic compliance tests. So, uh, many times I worked with DC converters, uh, but I have not really much time to play with them. Uh, or try to use different power values and see on an oscilloscope uh, how they are affecting uh, the wall converter. This video will start with the least efficient design and I try to improve uh, the DC converter to get higher efficiency by using appropriate electronic parts. Now you are looking at one of my Ethernet boards. Uh, this first revision had a linear regulator, uh, which worked fine uh, if you connect a 7 volt power supply. But uh, this board had a passive power over Ethernet ability and the 12 volt was really too much uh, to this small uh, linear regulator. So uh, I had to respin this board once again and tried to use uh, MC3463 DC step down converter. Unfortunately, uh, this was uh, my first switch to regulator design and with single layer board uh, this device worked, but the ground and switching loops were so huge that it probably was not uh, efficient and also very noisy. This board has finally properly designed step-up switching converter and it worked flawlessly. Here you see some perf board uh, infrared remote controlled lights uh, which are working also just fine. This another device is called a Micro Commander, uh, which has also step down switching converter. So I uh, get uh, the voltage battery, which is 4.2 volts, uh, down to 3.3 volts. I use this device as simple stopwatch, uh, infrared camera remote, or interval meter. So let's start my DC converter with just an inductor. The lower left corner you see my power supply. I had some delay issues with that camera, so this power supply camera is a little bit laggy and slow. So if I connect and disconnect some voltage to the inductor, you can see that I get a lot of sparks. They appear because the inductor is energized and when I disconnect the voltage, uh, the inductor is de-energized in the opposite polarity and the difference in voltage is in the hundreds of volts uh, thus uh, the sparks appear. Now uh, let's take a look uh, at the voltage spikes with my old trusty and rusty DS1052 Rigel scope. So uh, the scope probe is connected across the inductor and now I'm connecting and disconnecting voltage. Even the connected voltage is 2 volts. I get big voltage spikes about minus 400 volts. In this step I've just connected the inductor to the perf board. Also I wanted to connect and disconnect the negative alligator clip this time. That's because my converter will switch the low side of the inductor. Now I would like to store that de-energized inductor energy somewhere. So I add the diode and capacitor. I will use my tweezers as a switch so for a short moment uh, I will energize the inductor. Right now I use lab power supply with 3 amp maximum, which will not destroy my inductor. If I use battery, I can destroy the inductor with too much current. The tweezers are not ideal solution to run step-up converter. It would help uh, if I use nanosecond contact tweezers, but uh, I will use something better in a while. Also notice how bravely I put there a cup rated with 35 volts. I'm sure there will be much bigger output voltage until I connect some load resistor. So I've added capacitor and a diode. Uh, here's common ground. 
Uh, there's an input voltage connected to the yellow scope probe and output voltage across capacitor on the blue probe. You can see the output voltage is now lower because of voltage drop across uh, diode. Now I use my tweezers like a switch and try to generate some higher voltage. Notice uh, that the input voltage drops almost to the zero when I short the switch. That's because I'm powering the inductor too long. It's already saturated and my power supply cannot give more than 3 amps right now. But uh, with digital controlled tweezers I would control the switching more precise. Notice on the scope screen that the output voltage went almost to 16 volts. If I connect the 10K resistor across the capacitor, the voltage goes quickly down. In this example, I've connected the 100K resistor across output capacitor. This resistance value is low enough that I can generate a higher voltage, but at the same time you can see in time how uh, the voltage drops down if I stop switching the inductor. Now I have to change tweezers for something more suitable. In this test I put to the circuit NPN power transistor instead of tweezers. The bipolar transistor is not uh, the most efficient type in switched power supplies, but I get to that point in a next video sometime in the future. The switching PWM signal to the base is controlled by microcontroller. The input is now grounded, so the transistor is turned off right now. The yellow scope probe is now connected to the base of the transistor. The blue scope is again connected to the capacitor output. At the beginning I connect PWM to the transistor through the resistor. This way the transistor don't open completely and there is no risk of damaging the transistor. So the capacitor voltage right now is 4.4 volts. So let's connect the base of the transistor to the PWM behind that resistor. The yellow trace on the scope is PWM pulse to the base. The blue trace is showing that I created 15 volts from the input 4.5 volts. Now let's remove that resistor on the transistor base. I expect more input current on the power supply and also higher output, sub output voltage. So I get 60 volts. Now I swap uh, output resistor for 220 ohm 1. So the output voltage will be lower and I can try to play with different components and improve a bit efficiency of my circuit. After connecting the 220 ohm resistor, the output voltage is about 11 volts and you can start to see output voltage ripple because of the smaller resistor value. The frequency and PWM duty cycle has a big influence on the output voltage. I have several PWM outputs uh, with different duty cycles on my microcontroller pins. The first PWM has a duty cycle about 0.5% uh, and you can see that output voltage don't go up too much. Next the duty cycle is 4% width and the voltage is getting up to 5.2 volts. 6% duty cycle and the output changes from 5.2 to 6 volts. We can do better. 20% duty cycle is where we started from. 11.6 volts output voltage. Also, the input current has raised to 450 milliamps right now. Just to check uh, the input current at 6% uh, duty cycle, the input current is 40 milliamps, and at 20% uh, duty cycle, the current is 450 milliamps. The transistor is getting a little warm. Now the 40% duty cycle is too much and I'm getting more losses. At 50% duty cycle the current is 1.3 amps and the output voltage decreased to 9.8 volts. So here's uh, the graph based on different duty cycles. I used the not so accurate power supply values so it may be a little off. 
Also, uh, during measurement I have no idea why I was lowering the voltage for higher duty cycles, but I took that into an account into graph. So immediately I can see that with higher duty cycle the efficiency goes down. But that's not uh, an issue right now. I will try to focus on efficiency in the next video. The most obvious thing is that with the current setup I can get highest voltage around 20% duty cycle. I'm sure there's some mistake in the graph. Uh, I hope it's not completely wrong. Let's improve that circuit a little bit. To get higher output voltage I try to put here a bigger inductor. I don't own the RLC meter but I'm sure this second inductor has a higher inductance. So by new inductor I increased voltage from 11.4 to 12. Also I have noticed that input current dropped from 390 milliamps to 280 milliamps. That's a good news in efficiency. Another improvement could be bigger output cap. This new cap has a higher value 470 microfarads and also is low ESR rated. That means uh, that the inner resistance is lower and therefore it's specially suited for switched power supplies. So I've moved from 12.0 volts to 12.4 volts. Not too much, but I didn't expect that this change will rapidly increase voltage. There's another improvement and that is replace the diode with a Schottky diode, which has a lower voltage drop. Schottky diode can also open and close much quicker. Unfortunately, I don't have any small Schottky diode right now, so I use this big one. The bigger voltage the diode is rated, the bigger is reverse leakage current, so this leakage can affect my circuit. I'll try to find more appropriate diodes for next video. Output voltage increased by another 0.2 volts to 12.6 volts. The input voltage and current stayed at the current values, so the diode also improved efficiency. OK. Current design is really terrible. There are no input capacitors at all and power supply wires are 50 cm long. So let's put an input blocking capacitor and see what happens. And I get 0.4 volts more. Now the converter is outputting 13 volts. Ok, there's much more that needs to be done. A field effect transistor, proper input capacitor, short parts leads or even SMT parts. I'll leave that to another video. Thanks for watching, subscribe if you would like to see second part and see you later.